Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. I want to do another lecture for the benefit of the second year students of the Home Bible College. This is lecture number 29 and this lecture is going to be about the Gospel of John. I call the Gospel of John, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. So this is a New Testament book of about 21 chapters written by John the Apostle in his old age. It may have been the very last book written in the Bible. It could have been written between 85 and 100 AD, so very late indeed. John wrote to counter the false teaching that downgraded Christ and emphasised his humanity to such a point that he was looked upon only as a human being, a prophet of the Lord. And John writes to show that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ, the Son of God. Um, he is the Messiah. He is the Word of God. And John brings before us eight signs that authenticate his ministry. Now seven is the number of creation. And John shows that the Lord will bring in a new creation. The first three Gospels were called Synoptic Gospels because they all write from the same point of view and approximately in chronological order. Um, but John's Gospel is different. Um, John is writing um, to give a record of the signs of Christ and he gives them in a particular order. And so John uses very simple language, but it conveys the most uh, profound truths. John presents a simple chronological uh, sequence. He talks about the first day, the second day, the third day, the next day, and so on. Now, although John is showing the deity of Christ, his humanity is not forgotten. Um, for example, he talks about Jesus being wearied with his journey. The name Jesus is the main title of Christ or the main name of Christ. And John gives his own reason why he wrote the gospel in chapter 20. He says uh, that, that, that the reader might believe, might have faith in Jesus, believing that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. And that through faith, the writer may have, the reader may have, the believer may have eternal life. Now, John's favourite word is, is believe, and it's used over a hundred times. Eternal life occurs 35 times, but only 12 times in the other Gospels. So eternal life is a central theme. May I say that eternal life is not Christian salvation? Eternal life is immortality, and it's in contrast to mortal life. Um, some of the ways in which the, the writer John conveys the idea of eternal life is in the present tense. But then that's a, a, an idiosyncrasy of the prophets where they used uh, the tenses to indicate the certainty of something happening. So if something was absolutely certain that it would happen, they would put the tense in the past tense now he begins in, in chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word eternal and the word was with god he is co-divine the word was god and he is god himself and verse 14 he says and the word was made flesh so he became a human being to dwell among us on earth he says and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh, but in verse 18, he says, And no man hath seen God at any time. Unseen is the only begotten Son of God, uh, which is in the bosom of the Father. Christ hath declared him. He hath revealed him. So Christ himself, Jesus, is the revelation of of the Father. In fact, when we go through John's Gospel, we'll see that's a recurring theme. The relationship that he has with the Father is a recurring theme that con continually is emphasised by Christ. But let's come back to the signs. There are eight signs in John's Gospel, and all of them have a significance. They have a significance to Israel's past, and they have a significance 
to Israel's future. So, for example, um, in the first sign, we see that the Lord turns water into wine. That's the water in the well. He turns water into wine. In the second sign, he turns um, health for um, a son that's very sick. In the third sign, we see the healing of a lame man. Um, in the fourth sign, we see the feeding of the 5,000. And of course, each of these signs, each of these miracles have a resonance to the old covenant, a resonance to the history of Israel. And then we have four more signs. Sign five is the Lord walking on water. Sign six is the Lord giving sight to a blind man. Sign seven is Lazarus being raised from the dead. And the last sign is where the Lord brings fish from the sea. So the, and we could go into them. There's a tremendous depth of significance and meaning in these signs. So Nicodemus also writes to show the reaction of God's of reaction of people to Christ. For example, he gives Nicodemus's unbelief and he contrasts that with the faith of the woman of Samaria. So there's there's lots of things in John's gospel which have a significance. He also records at least seven I am's. Christ said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. And I am the true vine. These are just seven. There are many other I am's of Christ found in, in the gospel. Now the gospel has two parts. The central idea is found in chapter six. The situation John describes here is a picture of the situation of today, the church age. John says, Christ is now separate from his people. He's up in the mountain and they, Israel, are on Gentile waters, but he's coming back. And the Lord is coming back for Israel who are struggling with the nations. Now, John's gospel has three fundamental parts. We have the introduction to Christ, the Messiah, Jesus, the Messiah. We have the signs of Christ, the signs of his messianic authority and power and then we have the signs uh, in relation to his death and resurrection so those are the three parts of John's gospel it isn't going to be possible for me to go through all of the details of the gospel in this session just now but just suffice to say this is an exceedingly rich book to read of course all the bible's rich but this is exceedingly rich and let's just talk about these signs just for a moment. The first sign, the making of wine from water, is reminiscent of the first sign of Moses, where he turned the water in the river into blood. The Lord Jesus turns the water in the well into wine. Now the second sign, okay, the second sign is... Um, where the Lord t uh, heals a young boy. He heals a young boy. And this is reminiscent of the ministry of Elijah. He is the one who heals the young boy. And then we have the third sign. This is, th this is the sign of the Lord healing a man. And it's reminiscent of Joshua. Okay. And then we have the fourth sign, which is the Lord feeding the 5,000. When he fed the 5,000, he used five barley loaves and two small fish. When David, the king, went to Abathar, the high priest, he asked for five loaves. They would have been five barley loaves, no doubt. And so those are, the, those are the things that reflect Israel's past. The four men of Old Testament, Moses, um, Elijah, Joshua, and David. And then we have uh, the, the, the next signs. We have the water... Um, the Lord, um, the Lord provides water on the sixth sign. On the seventh sign, um, sorry, have I got that right? Yeah, that's right. On the seventh sign, the Lord raises Lazarus from the dead. Um, the eighth sign, the Lord Jesus brings water. Sorry, he brings fish from the water. 
So each of these are reminiscent of the future of Israel, where the Lord Jesus will set them at liberty and he will feed them and he will be their God. So there we are. There's the signs of John's gospel, an exceedingly rich, rich field of meditation and study. Well, we look forward to speaking to you next time and we wish you every blessing. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.